So I've tried to make a visual representation of what the plumbing is going to look like. I had to come up with an idea to fit this grey water hose. It's going to connect to, oh crap, I'm missing an elbow. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're going to be doing part two of the water change system for this rack. Now, if you haven't seen part one in last week's video, I really suggest you watch that video first before watching part two, because there is a lot of information in that video, how I came up with the design for the system and then the redesign and why I went with that redesign over the first one. So I really do suggest you watch that video first. However, if you are good to go, let's get into this week's video. I had to work out how to get this 35 mil hose connected to 25 mil irrigation pipe and I wanted to have a quick connect, like basically like when you take your garden hose off your tap in your garden, you just simply pull the ring and it comes off. I wanted to have something like that, but with irrigation piping. So with irrigation piping, it's not designed to be put onto a fitting and then frequently taken off and then refitted. You'll ruin the hose and you'll ruin the fitting and it will start to leak. They're not designed for that purpose. So I had to come up with an idea, come up with a way to fit this grey water hose, which is um, completely different to irrigation piping and fittings to uh, the irrigation outlets. And I've come up with that and I'll show you what that looks like now. So I've tried to make a visual representation of what the plumbing is going to look like on the tanks. Uh, it just helps me see what parts I need. And this is what I've come up with for the right side of the tanks. Two tanks on the right side will drain into these two T-pieces. So one tank into this T-piece, one tank into this T-piece. And this L bracket, this elbow, goes to the tanks on the other side, the other two tanks. So one tank on the other side, on the left side of the rack will drain into this elbow. Another, the tank on the other, on that side as well, will drain into this T-piece. They'll all connect to this elbow. This elbow will actually be like this. And it will connect from here to this piece because this will be the top row okay because of this elbow here so this is the top row so after that this elbow will go to this tap and i can isolate all the four tanks with this tap here this tap then goes into this t piece for the second row and then the two tanks on the right drain into one drains into this t piece one drains into this t piece this elbow is pointing down to the other length the other side of the of the stand and it connects to this elbow this elbow will be pointing downwards towards that elbow there and again the tank will drain into this elbow here another tank will drain into this t-piece they'll go into this elbow they'll drain water from here into that elbow down to this t-piece and then to this tap now this tap goes to these pieces here which are on the bottom row. So I'm going to have the least uh, speed with the siphon on the bottom row obviously because it's lower to the ground. So again the same principle applies like with the other ones. So you've got the two tanks on the right hand side draining into these two pieces. This elbow here is going to connect to, oh crap, I'm missing an elbow. Of course it's always the way, uh, always the way. Uh, I need to buy one more piece, one more elbow, and then I've got all the plumbing that I need to make this water change system happen. So I just need one more 25 mil elbow. But the same principle applies. I can connect them all up. Then that elbow that will be here will be like this. Again, pointing this way, pointing down the length of the stand. It will connect all the way to this piece, and then it will come to this T piece, and then this elbow. Now this elbow, you notice it's pointing this way. That's going to be pointing to my door, the fish room door. This tap will control everything. If I open or close this tap, uh, all the water is going to flow out. Uh, and this will have some pretty um, strong metal ties on this just to make sure it doesn't pop off. <laughs> but we'll see. I'm not sure how much pressure that's going to be able to handle from my water change pump. I think it's going to be fine though. And then we've got one of these gizmos. Now this is called a cam lock. I wanted to not restrict the flow of my water change system. So all the shared piping is 25 mil, diameter 25 mil. So it's wide enough, I think, to, to get a pretty good speed of draining the tanks 
out fairly quickly. With my system, I didn't want to go to a, just a normal regular garden hose because then that's going to be your choke point. That's going to slow the water flow down and it would have made all these pieces redundant. Buying the larger 25 mil taps, you know, buying the larger 25 mil elbows, the larger 25 mil T pieces would have been a waste of money to then just connect to my garden hose. So I've bought this cam lock system. So they come in these sets from your hardware store. It's going to slide right onto the irrigation hose here. And then I can, with a quick release, pop my larger diameter hose onto this without having to pull the hose off these irrigation fittings because then your hose and your fitting won't last long when you're doing that all the time. And uh, you'll start to get leaks and you'll damage the pieces and the irrigation hoses aren't made for pulling uh, them off these pieces frequently. So uh, this cam lock is going to fix that problem. So here there'll be a 25 mil uh, diameter irrigation hose connecting this tap to this cam lock. I'll have some metal ties on both. What I might have to do is restrict the flow of my water change pump using this tap. So we're going to have a metal tie here, a metal tie on this. The cam lock locks into position like this onto this piece, which is on the hose. I've set it on the hose already and it attaches that way. And obviously the water pressure is going to be fine. That's that's fine. The water pressure from a from a siphon is nothing. It's pumping the water back in that I'm obviously concerned about. But I'm pretty sure these irrigation fittings will be able to handle that flow. And because I've got the 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 first control knob here, this tap here, I'll be able to restrict the flow, and um, all the pressure will be on this end between the cam lock and this fitting here, rather than on these fittings here. So what because what I was considering doing was putting it like this. So having it in this configuration. If I was to have this configuration, I need a metal tie here, a metal tie here, a metal tie here on this part of the elbow and a metal tie on here. And I'd actually, I actually don't have that much height from the bottom of the last row of tanks, the bottom row of tanks to the floor of the fish room. This isn't, this isn't possible. So to save that, to save that space, I have it in this configuration. And having it in this configuration not only saves me floor space, like height for floor space to the bottom of the fish room from the bottom row of tanks, but it also saves me having to use too many of these metal ties that are going to clamp onto the irrigation hose and onto this cam lock. So the ties I'm talking about are these little things, okay? So you basically put this on your irrigation fitting, put your hose on then, and then you slide it back over your irrigation fitting or whatever plumbing you are trying to tighten to prevent it from popping off from the water pressure. And then you use a screwdriver to tighten it down. That's basically it. So I'm just going to have to use two of these for this fitting. And then that's it. We're sweet. We're ready to go. The water change system will be up and running. I can't wait. And like everything I do, I always forget just that one last piece right there. <laughs> well, what do you do? It's all good. So I've got all these other elbows here that I'm going to be using, but they're going in the tank. So this is uh, going to be used to suck the water out of the tanks, bring the water down back to these tea pieces and whatnot. So we're in the fish room now, and here's the stand with all the tanks, and here's the cam lock. So the cam lock's actually like going to be about, about here. But for this representation, we'll just place it on the floor like that. And the big hose I'll be using is this. And it goes out the door, out the fish room door. And it connects in here like that. So you clamp down the clamps. And that's how you connect a large gauge hose like this, 25 mil. Actually, this is wider than 25 mil. It's about 35 mil. Uh, hose to irrigation plumbing without having to use a garden hose and have, then have a choke point. So this, this piece here is going to connect to that tap that I showed you earlier with some irrigation hose and it's going to have more metal ties on this side okay, so to make sure the pressure when I'm filling up the aquariums doesn't pop the hose off. So this is locked, this is watertight in here, there's a washer in this cam lock and I can show you that by popping these back so you can see the washer that's in there okay and this is the other end of the cam lock that are already attached to this grey water hose 
you can see the diameter. So, we'll follow this out. To here. And as you can see, there's the same fittings on this end of it. And the reason why I've got fitting on this side is so I can pump water back into the tanks from my water change water using my uh, water change water pump. So this will attach to the pump. My actual water change water pump has the other fitting on it. And uh, so I'll bring this inside, um, connect this to my water change water pump, and keep the other end still connected to all that irrigation hose and water should flow back into the aquariums to fill them back up. So this is what my water change pump looks like now. You can see obviously the pump, it's normal fittings and then I've attached it to this cam lock ready for the other end of that hose I just showed you. So water's going to flow out of here pretty fast now. Um, the piece I was using before was uh, flowing water into the aquarium uh, through pretty much I think a 13 mil pipe now this is 25 mil so theoretically I should be able to drain and fill the tanks up twice as quick but we'll see that's why I've got that uh, tap that I showed you with that elbow uh, so I can control the flow of this return pump via that tap and hopefully the whole thing doesn't explode but we'll have to see so uh, this cord here just helps me lower the pump into my water change water reservoirs rather than rather than using uh, obviously it wouldn't be good to use uh, your power cord because you rip the power cord out of your pump and uh, yeah, those water change reservoirs are pretty deep so I use this bit of cord to do that to lower the pump in and out of the water change reservoir so this cam lock is replacing this sort of fitting to attach to to attach two hoses together and uh, with via a quick release so you need these cam locks to do that. Once you get to this size diameter pipe, you need cam locks. I'm not sure if there's anything else out there that can do it, but I found these cam locks to, to do the trick. Look at the difference in diameter. <laughs> it's gonna be a bit quicker to drain and fill the tanks up, I think. Can't wait. So there you have it, guys. The brand new water change system that I'm gonna put on this rack. What do you guys think? Is this gonna be a complete disaster? Is it gonna work? I really hope it works. But anyway guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. I really would appreciate it. Alright guys, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.